Hello, how are you? I hope you're good. Welcome to another video. Cozy up. I popped a little fireplace going. It's not real. <laughs> and I thought I'll sit down and open some boxes with you. We don't go the same places that we used to go. Because I got Owl Crate and Fairylit on the same day. And I know that it's not been that long since the last unboxing, but these I'm actually opening on time. And the last ones I was a little bit late for, so that's why. If you're here for either Owl Crate or the Fairy Loot boxes, but not the other, I will chapter this video so you can skip to whichever box you're looking for. Owl Crate is sent to me in exchange for an honest review. But without further ado, let's get into it. So. Um, both of these, I believe, are July boxes. Oh yeah, potions and poisons, of course. <laughs> this is the other side if you want to pause and look at who did the art for what. Oh, I'm actually very excited because obviously this is the theme that excites me. Potions and oh my god, this looks really cool. I will create apothecary. Cute. Bibliophile brew. I'm thinking maybe like a jar for drink. Oh no, it's not. Ooh. What are you? Oh, I like this. Um, not quite sure what it is yet. I think maybe it's for tea. It's like a ceramic one. Um, I like that it is white and black and it has a cork on the top, which is also really cute. This is how the design looks like and this is the code on the back. At the front it says, I will create apothecary, curious reader's block, take one when experiencing literary indecisiveness. Oh, this is maybe for a TBR jar then, I'm assuming. So maybe you put your slips of paper of what you should read. Let I will create apothecary decide your fictional fate. Yeah, I'm assuming, I'm assuming that's the case. I actually really, really like it. The only thing I'm not the biggest fan of is having the brand's logo and the name being so in the middle of the design because I, I prefer things non-branded. For the, for the main design, but that is a personal preference. I do really like the design. I think it's really pretty. The designer's name is right there, if you're wondering. Bubble elixir. This is gonna be bubble bat, I think. That is how the label looks like. And it says, vial of dreams, high kith bubble elixir. Watermint and clementine. Ooh, love clementine. Not the biggest fan of the minty flavors for the bath, however, Oh, I really like this. Although it does rem remind me of a cough serum that I used to use as a kid, I think. But because it was as a kid, it kind of brings me like good memories. <laughs> when I didn't have to pay bills and stuff, that was nice. What are you? Oh, wait, is this for hand sanitizer? It's like a little pouch and it opens right here and then you can pop out the bottle. And I'm pretty sure, I think you have to unscrew it then take it and, and maybe you just fill it up here maybe that's the case and then oh that is actually really cool i don't know what this is for so let me look at the um, spoiler card lucy pevensey's healing cordial for the design embossed on our narnia inspired oh it's narnia next we have two enamel things the first one is the enamel bookmark again i'm wondering if they made the chain a bit longer <gasps> i think they had oh this is pretty yeah i think they had last time it was a bit too short but i think they listened and they made it longer which is cool so on one side we have i actually should have looked before i showed you <laughs> Um, oh, an eat me cookie. Okay, and then so this is gonna be an elixir saying drink me, I'm assuming. Very pretty though. So an Alice in Wonderland inspired one. Very cute. And then we have our monthly enamel pin, which is for the book of the month, which I don't know yet what it is, but this is how the pin looks like. The next thing is like a lollipop mold. Fenburn's Fatal frozen delicacy. So what is that for? Three dark crowns. Oh, that makes perfect sense because it fits the like there's a whole sister That's like a potioner. That I'm pretty sure I can wash it, but currently it's a little bit dusty from the packing uh, Materials, but that is how the design looks like um, A logo on the top and I'm assuming you just fill it in with whatever you want like juices or something The very last item is a tea towel, I believe and this looks like that. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. It's all like a uh, poison garden. And then you have a bunch of 
flowers and the herbs. I think it's mainly flowers on the actual thing and I love it because I mean if this is not my aesthetic I mean I have another aesthetic but <laughs> I love it this labyrinth lost is the inspiration for it I found the book and actually this will be a second copy because I have a special edition coming from fairly as well but it's this poison heart we have the author letter. This is how the cover looks like. It's a glossy one this time. It is very much signed. We have roses embossed on the hardcover. And we have this, oh, really pretty, um, dust jacket underneath. And this is by the same author who wrote Cedrella is Dead. So let me just read to you what this book is about. Strange magic blooms behind the poison gate. Bryces has a gift. With a single touch, she can grow plants from tiny seeds to rich blooms. When Bryces' aunt dies and wills her a dilapidated estate in rural New York, Bree and her parents hope that surrounded by plants and flowers, she will finally learn to control her gift. But their new home is sinister in ways they never expected. It comes with a mysterious set of instructions, a walled garden filled with the deadliest botanicals and the world and generations of secrets. There is more to Brie's sudden inheritance than she could have imagined, and she is determined to uncover it. From the bestseller author of Cedrellis that comes an enchanting story about a young woman with the power to conquer the dark forces descending around her. I actually really like the sound of it, hence why I have another copy coming. <laughs> so that's really cool. I mean, the theme was very promising for me personally. Obviously, you can never please everyone because everyone has different preferences. I quite enjoy this. I really like this tea towel and I like tea towels. I know they're a hit and miss for some people, but I, I personally actually use them quite a bit. I also think the TBR jar is quite cute, especially if you don't have one yet. Yeah, strong box. I like it. We also have the Owl Crate leaflet, which shows normally, yeah, how the book looks like, different to the normal edition. And then as well as Dark Academia for the next theme. That is really cool as well. I'm really excited. That's a theme I like and we have a book sleeve with art form for Sindri. Ooh, that's gonna be Raven Boys. I'm pretty sure that would be Raven Boys. I love Sindri's art and so I'm excited for that. Okay, now let's get to Fairloot. Again, I am biased, so this is not a review because I work there. Um, this is just me showing you what's inside because I want to share. I am in no way asked to share this, by the way, just to clarify, um, but I want to. So here here we go. The theme is Tales Retold. This is all the information if you want to pause and read. Okay, let's let's dive in. <laughs> um, so the first is this book sleeve. Kind of velvety inside as well. And this is by Rosie Thorns and it's for Spin the Dawn. It's for Spin the Dawn. Um, it's the same on both sides. Then we have another T10. Uh, it's super reflective, so it's kind of hard to show on camera, uh, but I hope that you'll see it now. <laughs> it's really, really reflective. And in the camera is a gorgeous design by Chatty Nora, who is super talented. And then if you look, you'll find the wingspan inside. <laughs> this is inspired by Court of Thorns and Roses, Court of Mist and Fury more accurately and silver inside um and on one side it says be glad of your human heart pity those who do don't feel anything at all you can obviously use it for your teas or a tbr jar or anything that you wish to store in it really then we have cinderella is dead socks so these these are designed by katarina book designs and they have the motives that would represent the book and they're like the longer ones. Then we have an umbrella to prepare for incoming autumn. This is inspired by Heartless. Um, so we have the, it's kind of a card design and I don't want to pull it out because, <laughs> oh, it started raining. Okay. Some of you guys in the comments last time told me that it is bad luck and I'm not even superstitious, but I mean, I could be a little stitious and I just rather not jinx anything. Then we have this beautiful foiled print, uh, which is very, very pretty with the moon. It is of the star touched queen. And then we have two um, tarot cards. These are for Carval. 
<laughs> by Stephanie Garber. And then we come to the book pouch with the goodies inside. You can see purple peeking through. Oh, I'm so excited to see this in person. This is the bookmark. This is the character art, which I love. Then we have the um, author letter. Then we have our fairy scoop and then the book. <laughs> it's six crimson cranes in this beautiful pastel edition. You have speckles of foil on it as well. And the stencil edges and the, the solid ones on top and bottom. Um, ah, you're so pretty. Why are you so pretty? <laughs> it's signed in purple. Okay. Foil. How do I show this? foil <laughs> on the naked hardcover of the character as well as this stunning dust jacket. I mean, it is very pretty. So let's read what the synopsis of this is. Chioryanma, the only princess of Kiata, has a secret. Forbidden magic runs in her veins and on the morning of her betrothal ceremony, Shiori loses control. At first, her mistake seems like a stroke of luck, forestalling the wedding she never wanted, but it also catches the attention of Reikama, her stepmother. A sorceress in her own right, Rikama banishes the young princess turning her brother into cranes and warning Shiori that she must speak of it to no one, for with every word that escapes her lips, one of her brothers will die. Penniless, voiceless and alone, Shiori searches for her brothers and uncovers a dark conspiracy to seize the throne. Only Shiori ha can set the kingdom to right, but to do so, she must place her trust in a paper bird, a mercurial dragon, and the very boy she fought so hard not to marry. And she must embrace the magic she's been taught all her life to, to contain it no matter what it costs. So there you have it. And then the next theme is love struck. Let me know if you read these books. And I also want to give a massive welcome and a thank you for either joining or upgrading their tiers on my Patreon. So the warmest of thank yous goes to Lori, Marine, and Caitlin. Thank you guys so much. I really hope you will enjoy your tiers. Um, can't wait to get to know you better. Thank you so much for watching. Stay awesome, stay kind, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys! I ain't never, ever hung my head